Hey guys, so this is here bringing you another video and welcome back to Patch Note Breakdown. So this is for 13.7 and to be honest, a lot of the changes that we're going to be seeing in this patch are not going to be insanely solo queue centric. MSI is on its way. I think it's May sometime. Um, so yeah, hopefully we'll have some solo queue changes, but most of this is going to be for pro play, to be honest. Um, one thing I actually want to ask you guys is question of the day and remember to like the video it does really help out. So historically, Riot has always balanced the game from a top-down perspective with pro play at the top of the pyramid. And that does make sense um, for the most part. My question that I'm going to ask you guys is, do you think we've actually now hit the time in League of Legends that pro play isn't really getting as many views as it used to? You know, if you watch, if you look at Twitch, which obviously I don't watch pro play anymore, like a lot of people, but they're getting like 100,000 views where years ago they got like 250,000, right? Is pro play even the biggest advertising selling point to the game anymore to warrant balancing the game all around pro play? Because for years people have said maybe pro play should have a separate patch or something like that. And I don't know, maybe soon is the time that pro play shouldn't be the absolute prioritized thing. I know technically it's the pinnacle of the game, but it's not as big anymore. Or it doesn't feel as big. And maybe it's a, it's huge in Korea and stuff still. And maybe that's fine. But at least here in the West, in EU and NA, it just doesn't seem to be the big thing anymore. Um, you know, League is an old game nowadays, let's face it. So I don't know. But let me know. So it is a fairly decent patch. They are saying, like, not everything here is about MSI. That they've got some other things. But let's be honest, most, most stuff is. A uh, pretty big patch, so I would say we're going to go through this semi-quickly. I'll still try to explain as much as I can, but as you can see, there's quite a lot to go through. Uh, the nerfs, Annie, which I would say it would be surprising if that's actually Annie mid. I'd imagine it's more Annie support, but it says mid there. Uh, but Annie, Lee Sin, Olaf, Ramos, Sejuani, Viga, Vi, Wukong, Zeri. Um, so, I, I, again, I don't follow pro play an insane amount, obviously, but I, I am aware Olaf... Sedge, Vigar, Vi, Wukong, Zeri. I know these champions are very pro play picks at the moment. Um, so yeah, we'll see what that does. And then buffs to Alistair, Azir, Graves, Callista, Yaswo. And then yeah, I, I mentioned the last one last, uh, Katarina. A few people did me, me, like message me going, did you see Katarina's getting a buff? I will be honest, I'm very, very confused about that. I don't 100% know what the buff is. But if it's not like getting rid of the AD build and buffing the ability power build, then I've got no idea what they're doing. Again, Cat is still a very, very strong champion. There is a reason that I ban it all the time. Partially, it's because she's a strong solo queue champion. But secondly, she is the most one trick champion in the game. Like she's the most popular champion to one trick. So it's actually, if you don't like playing against Cat, she's also very good in solo queue. And it's the most effective champion to ban to ban a one trick it is a very effective ban at the moment and she's getting buffed so i'm a bit weirded out by it but we'll see what it is uh kazix and thresh are getting adjustments and then we've got all these item changes so let's get into it and then we've got some weird skins that are a little bit cringe but anyway first one is alistair very basic more armor more health obviously they gave him damage buffs in the, in the form of giving him ability power scaling but that didn't didn't really do anything for him because guess what? You don't buy ability power on Alistar. Um, so if they're not going to give him more base damage just straight up, you need to make him tankier. I still don't really see Alistar being played massively unless they are going for a very high damage comp that then Alistar is realistically your only tank. But that is also quite rare. Um, next champ is Annie. Yeah, okay, I was right. So you see here, maxing shield of support. This is more of a support nerf than the mid. It says mid. The, that, the nerf is for mid lane, right? But this is for support. So they've done that wrong. But anyway, um, so obviously support Annie maxes E. She buys Shirelia's battle song, I think it is, that gives shielding, etc. She buys Riley second for Tibbers to just constantly slow. It's very strong. So this is more of a support nerf than a mid lane nerf because mid lane max is E lost. You know, it's not the priority. So the cooldown of it is staying the same at rank one, but is ultimately going on a two second nerf at rank five, which again is a support nerf because you max shield first on support Annie. And the shield amount again is staying the same at rank one, but is being nerfed 
as the ranks go on. So again, for support, or sorry, for mid lane Annie, not really a massive nerf because you only get one point in E and you just leave it there until you have to max it. Where support Annie, this is a nerf because you're maxing that ability. So if you play Annie mid right now, she'll probably still be completely fine. She's still in an okay place. If you play Annie support, this is going to hurt a little bit. So there's that. Azir. Now, I'm not going to go through everything with Azir. And I will say I actually did about a week ago look through what they were doing with Azir. And basically, TLDR, they are moving Azir back to what it used to be ages ago. That right now, before the patch, you would be buying Ludens on Azir, maxing Q, and you're basically looking for Burst. They're changing him into what he used to be is being a DPS champion. So you'll now max W, not Q. And uh, you'll be building like Nash's Tooth first item because you're prioritizing getting those W soldier auto attacks in. And then going like Leandri's because you're just get applying that tick damage to apply more DPS. So that is what they're moving to. So like as they say here, in summary, max W now. So it's the it's a different way to play the champion. It's more auto attack centric with your w soldiers rather than q so please do keep that in mind if you play azir but as you can see he's getting all the changes that basically are making it more that way even the in-game will recommend maxing w first as well the only thing that isn't really to do with that specifically is his passive which obviously is building the tower uh upon a dead tower that is lasting longer and has a higher cast range. So that's a nice little buff too. But everything else is to do with changing from Q to W. So keep that in mind. Graves. Um, so Graves critical strike builds were nerfed back in 11.22 and haven't really recovered since the durability update, even though it kind of feels the durability update is completely gone by now. But anyway, um, the passive critical strike bonus has been increased and our cooldown decreased early. This, to me, straight up is an MSI change because Graves is, is an exciting jungler. He's a carry jungler. He invades. He goes for duels. They want him in MSI. That's kind of what it feels like to me. So, yeah. So the passive of it is going up 10%. So critical strike per pellet. That is straight up like a 33%. No, that's a 50% buff, technically. If it's 20% at the moment, it's 30% now. That's a 50% buff. And then the ultimate is going on a lower cooldown earlier in the game. So not well the crit is a lot and that's a lot of damage that can translate into a lot of damage with building crit on the champion and he probably will now he'll probably go shield bow into navori maybe for graves but he might i don't know if he will actually go navori second he might go like shield bow into collector into navori something like that maybe works for graves quite well clister one of the that we've always said the trifecta of hard to balance champions that even riot has admitted that they've struggled with and I'm sure there's probably more of these champions technically now, but Callista, Rise, and Azir were the pyramid of the three that Riot at some stage kind of was like, we don't know what to do with them. We're just going to leave them in a nerfed state. And they left them for a while, but they're having the confidence to try and do something again. And the thing with Callista, because she has such a mechanically intense AD carry of so much, well, so much more movement than other AD carries, because you have to intertwine movement between every auto. She is so good the higher rating you go, and, you know, pro play that is the highest of rating. Expect her, if she's in any state of strength, she will be played. Um, so, you can see here is Callista has frequently been a pro-bound champion, uh, but hasn't seen much play this year. Yes, because they left her in a nerfed state. But we're being very cautious with giving her some power heading into MSI. So basically, is that they don't want to, like, completely make it crazy, but just giving her a little bit of strength, she's probably going to be in pro play that is it's the way of the champion so they're giving him her attack damage growth and they're reducing the ceremony that it takes to kill your teammate to bind with them which is good because that was a bit annoying and then the ride to get the channel together Callista is now forced to channel on the black spear while her oh so she can't just click it and run away anymore you're both standing there for eight seconds i think that kind of makes sense but there we go here we go katarina Oh, they are doing it. So when I saw the Katarina stuff, it really just confused me because I was like, what? This champion is good in solo queue. Like, you see Katarina's pop off quite often, right? If you don't ban it. And like, if I don't ban it, like it's happened today in solo queue, if I didn't ban Katarina, it was played instantly. That's why I ban it every game. Um, so passive AP ratio increased, R base AD ratio decreased, attack speed scaling increased. So 
hopefully they're getting rid of the AD build again. And just reminding everybody, whenever the AD build was at its most prevalent a while ago, Riot even said that build was unhealthy. They removed it to give the AP build legs again. And then somehow the AD build has made a comeback. It's bizarre. But anyway, so... Carrying his various playstyles requires some retuning occasionally. We are giving AP builds a slight buff so they stand clearly above the other builds as her primary playstyle. And also buffing the AD plus AS uh, builds as those aren't performing well at the moment. What? Um, well, I guess it's the AD plus attack speed. So the AD build's doing okay, but not with attack. I have no idea. So the passive... Um, do 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 what's changing okay here ap ratios that's it so the ap ratios of the passive were plus 65 to 95 percent of your ability power or getting ability power ratio it's now 70 to 100 percent of your ap ratio for your passive so if you get 300 ability power on cat arena which is very manageable on the champion maybe even get more every time that you touch one of those passive daggers and you do that little spin you'll be instantly doing that amount of damage as pure damage from your ability power. So that is, uh, that's strong. Again, it, obviously it was 95 before it's 100, so it's only a 5% buff, but when she can do it quite a lot at any given time, it does add up fast. And then the Death Lotus Ultimate, physical damage per dagger is going down, but she's getting more damage per 100%, uh, per 100 bonus attack speed. So the more attack speed you have, the more that this will do. And I think the current carrier builds is divine into Nashes, but Nashes only gives 30% attack speed, I think. So like she's not gonna get to a hundred percent attack speed just building a Nashes. You'd have to buy three attack speed items to get that plus 50% bonus damage, I think. But I don't know. We'll see. She'll still be a crazy solo queue champion. Let's put it that way. Kazix, Q isolation range requirement decreased, W slow decreased, slow versus isolation targets decreased, and R buff duration increased. So, yeah, we expect fighter Kazix to remain powerful, but these changes should make all of his builds more competitive. Okay, so the isolation range is becoming technically tighter, so it's, it, you can't, well, it, it's better for Kazix because he's detecting someone as isolated in a shorter range so if, if you've got a teammate nearby it's more likely that they might be isolated now because the circle of isolation is coming in so that's a buff for kazix the w void spike slow is going down of the evolve um and also slow against isolated targets is also going down so they're just getting rid of some slows that kazix has because in the end of the day he is an assassin they're not really supposed to have utility and then the uh, Void Assault buff duration is going up to 12 seconds where it was 10. Um, so overall, some nice changes here to like Assassin Kha'Zix more than Fighter Kha'Zix. Um, but it's not exactly hurting Fighter Kha'Zix at the same time. So there you go. Lee Sin, base AD decreased and base armor decreased. Again, obviously Lee Sin's still a very popular champion because he's very fun to play and he's high skill, high reward, all that stuff. But he's never scaled, obviously, amazingly well. And League is a pretty much scaling game. But I've always said pro play is different. So this is also really sucky for solo queue Lee Sin's. Uh, because I wouldn't say Lee Sin is amazing in solo queue right now. But in pro play, it's where you see Renekton's do well or Jace's do well. Pro play is different. Pro play, they can build a comp around knowing what their strengths and weaknesses are. And if you have something like a Lee Sin or something like a Renekton who has that crazy early tempo and early scaling... You play to that, but then you draft late game picks that pick up the slack. Like in solo queue, if you have a Renekton, but then you've also got a Lee Sin jungle or an Elise or something that doesn't scale, it's a bit like, oh, we've got two things that don't really scale great here. In pro play, they won't do that. They'll have a Renekton, or if they do, just to say the point, if they've got a Lee Sin and a Renekton, then you bet your bottom dollar they're going to use that Lee Sin and that Renekton to apply so much early pressure that they try to snowball it. Where in solo queue, if you've got a Renekton top lane and a Lee Sin jungle, and the Lee Sin ignores the Renekton, goes bot lane and fails a gank, Renekton dies to a gank, game over. You know, that's the point. In pro play, they don't do that. So just a bit of nerfs to Lee Sin. 
Olaf, which I am aware Olaf for the most part for, you know, good Olaf players. And to a lot of people, they're even saying like not even great Olaf players uh, has been too dominant in top lane for too long. That he has a lot of good matchups. And as long as he has an okay early game, he can just snowball like mad. And I will say I recorded a game today that I think I am uploading. I played Olaf, Olaf top on the main account immediately. And I had a terrible early game. I played shocking, terrible, bad. I managed to recover it. And by recovering it, I ended up killing people in late game and stuff. So I, I could see that, you know, and the thing is my early game, I mucks up myself by my own play. If I didn't do that, I can definitely see where Olaf is a little bit nuts. So they're just going to nerf it. So the passive Berserker's range, the attack speed is going down. So it was 60% to 100. It's now 50% to 100. Now, again, I believe that is when the lower health he is, the higher attack speed he gets. But you're getting less attack speed, which is good. And then the undertow, the physical damage of it, is going down by default by 5. Now, again, to a lot of people, this doesn't sound like a lot. But especially from levels 1 to 3 for Olaf, he tries to go quite all in. That extra little 5 damage here and there, it does add up with multiple axes thrown. In an average fighter level 2, level 3, he might throw 3 axes, 3 to 4 axes. That's 15 to 20 damage now just gone. And that makes the difference on a really close early game duel against a Fiora or something. You know, that that's the difference of getting a kill or dying. So it does add up. It does make a difference. It, and it's the weird thing about League. These changes don't seem like a lot. But what Riot is ultimately trying to do is they're trying to take a champion like Olaf that's been very strong and very dominant recently. And they're trying to make it not then completely garbage. They're trying to make it still okay to play. They're not wanting to go from crazy popular to bottom of the barrel. They're trying to just nerf the top slice of strength off and leave them still in an okay place. It's really hard to do. Ramus, uh, W armor scaling decreased. So the bonus armor, 35 base, and then he used to get 40 to 100% total armor increase. It's now big nerf, by the way. 80% is the maximum total armor he's going to be getting. There's 20% nerf. That is quite considerable. But to be fair, <clears throat> this is also why... I don't know if any of you have watched... I've watched some of Babus's videos, and he's playing Ramus occasionally. I've literally watched him play Ramus, obviously rush Thornmail, run to an AD carry, taunt them, and put W on... And he's got his max W with all the armor with Thornmail. The AD carry like three hits itself. Like three hits itself. All to, forces to, you know, they're taunted. So they are attacking Ramus. They attack three times and that AD carry is dead. And you're just like, whoa. And it's because it's how much armor he's got as well. Because that's being all just done back. So a little bit crazy. So they are toning that down. Sejuani. So I will say in that Olaf game, I was against a Sejuani top lane. I did muck up the early game and you'll see that in a video. I did muck it up myself. I, I Just to say the point, I walked into tower by accident, took one tower hit and then Sejuani top lane with Ignite got a kill. Then she got too tanky and I was squishy and then she could just walk over me. Her damage, I will say though, was insane. And like such high damage numbers for a full tank there was no demonic purchase there wasn't like oh but she has an ap item no ability power item purchased at all she ran me over like i didn't exist it was insane so anyway let's see if they're doing any nerfs i think most of these nerfs are to jungle because that's her more prevalent position so the passive Fury of the North is going down. Damage cap against monsters was 300, is now 250. So that's going to slow uh, clear down. I've got hiccups, apparently. The Q, which again, you can use quite often, uh, is going to uh, 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 a nerf. So a second extra on every single rank. And the Glacial Prison also going up 10 seconds per rank. So you can't use your ulti as much. So overall, nerfs to Sejuani. Not addressing her damage at all, though, which again is still very high thresh um uh, which i love this and i, I imagine toaster trolley you are obviously support in clash is a very happy boy q cooldown refunded on hit decreased so if you hit a hook on thresh people didn't really realize oh wait is it the other way around oh wait it's the other way around he's gonna be a very sad boy it's less of a it, it, mm, oof. anyway uh so other way around if you hit a thresh hook before the cooldown on your hook went down 
three seconds. Just by hitting a hook, three seconds come off the cooldown. And that roughly, I would say, a, a, a max Q for Thresh was like, I'd say, between six to eight seconds based on how much ability ace you have. Where if it's six seconds, you hit a hook, well, then it's only a three second cooldown. So instead, and then you could just hook again. If you hit a hook now, it's only giving you two seconds off. So let's say again, it's a six second cooldown in late game, where before, if you hit a hook, it would be a three second cooldown. It's now going to be a four second cooldown. And that does matter. That gives someone who just got hooked extra room to get away or extra room to not get hooked again. So it, it it's a nerf. So Toaster might be actually a sad boy. Vigar. Now, I will say... I... The Vyga, it's weird. They changed this champion to give him more freedom in lane by increasing his range of Q and W a lot. Um, and since doing that, he's become partially too safe because that's what they did. And now he's had a lot of uh, changes in patches where before that change, he was kind of just okay. And that's fine for a late game hyper carry like Vyga. So it sounds weird, but it's just kind of like maybe just go back to what it was before. But anyway, um, they are nerfing his early game uh, straight up, but buffing his absolute late game, which you could say, oh, that makes sense for something like a Viger. That's what he's supposed to be. He's supposed to be high risk early because he's so weak. But if he gets the late game, it should be GG. He's going to one shot everybody, which yeah, is partially, I guess, the fantasy of the champion. So the Q AP uh, ratio was 60% on all ranks. It's now starting at 45. It equalizes at rank four, but it's actually getting a 5% buff at rank five, which obviously you do max your Q. So you will get that quick. But then the other things are also getting nerfed. So the W was 100% AP ratio at all ranks. Really helps obviously with wave clear, for example. It's now 70% at rank 1, which is bad, and 110% at rank 5. So it's a buff, but sometimes you max W second on Vigar. If you've got a pretty free lane, you can max W second. In a lot of matchups where you're in a disadvantage, you actually max E second to have a, a, a more safety. So that's going to feel really bad if you are maxing E second. I will say this change might force Vigars to no matter what max W second, because otherwise it's going to do no damage. That's the problem. And then the E is Vigar can no longer hide his E uh, VFX from enemies by placing it in certain walls. So that was a thing for more advanced Vigar players they used to do. Primordial Burst, the ultimate once again, is this is just straight up kind of a nerf until late game. 75% ability power on all ranks. It's now 65, 70, and then it equalizes. So no buff for this at all. It equalizes at level 16. A rank three ult. Yeah, that I I I I don't like this. And you know, yes, technically Viga's gonna be stronger in late game because he has better AP ratios and Q and W at rank five, but he is gonna be so weak in the early game. And that's the problem. Even something like a Cassadin isn't that weak in the early game, where Viga now is going to be that weak in the early game. So this isn't very good for the, the tiny evil lord. Uh, Q, uh, Q based, uh, sorry, Vi, Q based damage decreased, AD ratio increased, E based damage decreased, AD ratio increased, and AP ratio increased. So obviously we've been seeing a lot of Vi even in solo queue, but I know she's been pro play as well. Um... And it's like lethality via, I think. It's like, you know, Eclipse and stuff like that. And she does a lot of damage. So the minimum damage is going down. Just straight up 10 nerf, but getting more AD ratios. So it's better scaling, technically. And the maximum damage, again, is going down by 20 per rank, but is getting better scaling. 20% bonus more AD. So it's, it's technically a better scaling build, but just not as dominant in the early game. And the Relentless Force... Physical damage um, is going down 10% AD ratio. So that's kind of where you're getting you're getting this buff from here. So they're taking away 10% from this and adding it to this. So why are they doing that? I arguably because Q is a skill shot. So you should be rewarded more for hitting a skill shot rather than just you pressing E and doing an auto attack. So it's harder to hit a Q than it is to just press E and auto. So that's potentially what they're thinking, is they're just transitioning strength from E, the auto attack, to the Q, that's a skill shot. So I, I'm okay with that. 
Wukong have been very dominant for quite a while. So pro play and solo queue, and I would agree, very strong champion. So attack damage is going down. Um, w cooldown is going up by two seconds. Well, two seconds in late game, where it's still a 22 second cooldown in, in rank one. And then bonus attack speed is also going down by 5%. So just straight up nerfs across the board for Wukong. He still will do a lot of damage, uh, but just not as much and not as easy. So there you go. Yasuo, passive shield stronger at later levels. So yeah, I, honestly, like some people are like, oh god, Yasuo buffs. Yeah, I, I don't think Yasuo has actually been that scary for quite some time, personally. Um, and whenever there's a Yasuo in the game, the only scary ones are actually the good Yasuo players. If you're not good at this champion, you will just do terrible. That is the thing. You know, there is a reason that Yasuo has the 0010 meme. Most Yasuos aren't great at the champion. He's very high risk, obviously. He's harder to play than his brother. Uh, he's less safe features, let's say that. Um, but, you know, the 0-10 meme is, oh, he gets the 0-10 and then he starts carrying is because this champion, no matter what they're doing to this changes and buffs and stuff, he is strong when he hits that two item power spike. And, you know, if you're 0-10, you're not doing very well. But by the time you get 0-10, you should maybe at, be at two items. He then can turn up and do stuff. It's just getting obviously to his crit passive. So the shield amount is going up. Um, and it's going up later into the game by a lot. A hundred more shield at rank, I'm well, level 18 it looks like. So that's not bad. And then the E sweeping blade is damage increase per stack was 25% of E's base damage. It's now 15 to 25% of E's total damage. Okay, so total damage is better than base damage. So that is a damage buff because that's taking an account of building more AD. And then the maximum stack count is now two. It's actually going up to four. Whoa. So if you get the four stacks, your E will then be doing 100% more damage. Whoa, that's, that's pretty good. So that is the type of thing that you really want to use your E on minions, get to four stacks first, and then use your E on the enemy. It's going to be so much more damage that people aren't expecting. Oh, damn. <laughs> Zeri's here again. Surprise, surprise. Um, so health growth decreased, passive shield absorption decreased, our AD scaling decreased. Yeah, I mean, Zeri, as I've said time and time again in these patch notes, we're going to see her nearly forever because she fundamentally has a unhealthy kit for the game. Kind of like Callista, like she's kind of the modern Callista on steroids. The better players will do amazing with this champion if she has any little type of strength because she is hard to play she has so much more requirements than a standard auto attacking ad carry you have so much more movement you have to aim your auto attacks she's harder but when you're really good at the game it's fine and that's the thing is if riot you know to make this champ accessible people you know i'm not trying to say it to be bad but unranked players or iron or bronze players if you make this champion really weak so pro play can't play her very much or play her at all She's going to be absolutely terrible to play in unranked or iron or bronze or silver games, obviously. But if you give her any type of strength to, okay, those players can now play her, you know, she's kind of okay. She then will always be played in pro play. It's one of those nightmare kits that is really hard to do. So uh, health growth is going down per rank. So it was 115, it's now 100. Shield absorption is going down. So it was 60% of damage dealt, it's now 45%. And the R, magic damage, is going down in AD ratio. So just straight up nerfs for Zeri across the board. No doubt we'll probably see her in a patch again very soon. Death Stance. So attack damage is going down, but it's getting ability haste and it's getting less armor, but they're changing the item build. So there's that, okay. Catalyst, you're getting more health but it's costing more. I'm okay with that, actually, to be honest. And Rod of Ages, uh, combined cost is coming down. Oh, okay. So again, with Abyssal as well. So they're just giving you a little bit more health on it. So it's a better, it's a better component in itself. So, and yeah, it's significantly cheaper than Lost Chapter. So they're actually making it the same price as Lost Chapter. I kind of like that idea, but you are gaining for it. You're getting... 75 more health but it's the same price i think that's fine and especially that it's it yes you are buying like from my champions that i 
build Rod of Ages. Yes, it's taking a bit longer to get there, but you get Rod of Ages. Let's be, oh, it's the same time. It's a 200 gold here, but it's a 200 gold here. So to have more strength at the component phase, I actually quite like. That's the thing. I actually don't mind that at all. Grievous Wounds. So we felt it was counterintuitive that these items did not apply their unique effects to damage shielded enemies, as this is inconsistent with other on damage effects like Leandri's. So shields can't save you now. Items that apply Grievous Wounds on damage dealt to the target will now apply even if the damage you deal or dealt was completely nullified by a shield. Hmm. Grievous Wounds will still not apply to vulnerable targets or targets who block the spell with a spell shield. So what this means is if you were being shielded by a Janna and you hit an opponent and that should have applied Grievous Wounds, if the damage wasn't enough to break the shield, it would not have applied Grievous Wounds because it doesn't count it as damage done. But now, even if you don't do enough damage to apply Grievous, to break the shield, it will still apply Grievous Wounds. But if you're playing Severe, for example, or your Morgana with Black Shield, you can still block people's attacks that then would apply Grievous Wounds, if that makes sense. So it's a straight up buff for Grievous Wounds item. It, it lets us actually apply it easier. Um, and so there's that. So that's good. ARAM adjustments. Uh, Clash, I will say. I will be playing Clash. It looks like both days. So good, uh, you know, look forward to that. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't upload much of last Clash because I'll be honest, it was a bit of a mess. Day one completely bugged out. We were waiting for two hours for games. And then day two, again, I don't know if it's 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 something that you all deal with with Clash. We lost our first game, which was a bit annoying. And then we had to wait like over an hour for the next game because our opponents gave up. You know, they, they quit after game one. So we didn't have a round two. And then we played the final. It was just a bit annoying. So hopefully this weekend will be a bit better. Let's hope. Um, off screen pings. Paying attention to the minimap. Blah, blah, blah. So yeah, if you now, if there's a ping, it will be in the corner of your corner of your screen, I think, is where you'll see pings happen. So there's that. Behavioral systems. We're rolling out improvements to our disruptive behavior detection systems that detect verbal abuse and intentional feeding. That means you'll be seeing increased actions taken against players for in-game behaviors. I'll be honest, and I've said this before, whenever I log in, I am seeing, you know, such and such has been reported, you know, such and such has had a punishment. I'm seeing that most times I'm logging in now, and several times I've had two or three of those boxes to click. It's crazy. Challenges, competitive. Ooh, what's this? Autofill is removed. Hmm? Wait, 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 what, what? Okay, let's read this. We've tested lower surrender timers. Oh, you can't read all of it. There you go. We've tested lower surrender timers in normals for several patches now, and the impacts have met our expectations. Slightly increased surrender frequency, leading to slightly lower average game times. We believe this change is right to allow teams more agency in choosing when matches to play out. Okay, so in solo queue and flex queues, Normal surrender, so a 4 out of 5 or 70% of team members must agree to pass the vote, is available at was 20 minutes, it's now 15 minutes. And the ununanimous early surrender requirement has been removed. April 7th is when this goes live. Okay. Huh. So at 15 minutes now, you can surrender the game... if four of your five teammates agree well yeah before you'd have to wait till if one person was just saying no you'd have to wait the whole 20 minutes so it's now 50 oh, yeah, that's better so then we'll be running an experiment on normal draft in eu northeast oceania and russia during the 13.7 patch cycle specifically to test some of our functionality around matchmaking for the upcoming quick play q type uh, for those regions. So autofill is removed. All players in a party must choose a blah, blah, blah. So for those that don't know what quick play is. Yeah, so quick play is replacing normal queue. Or blind pick. One of the two. Or draft pick. And basically it's it's something that they did experiment with years ago. But instead of... Let's say you're playing draft pick normal. You don't pick mid lane anymore. You don't pick jungle. You don't pick top. You pick two champions. You pick... Renekton, Oriana, 
and you pick and you know Renekton top or Oriana mid and then the game goes in and it gives you one of those things that's kind of the rough gist of what they're doing and I think this is to actually I think it's not technically draft pick I think this is to replace blind pick entirely or something I don't know so yeah so it's 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 a it's basically a mode that you can guarantee to get a champion that you actually want to play so there's that 32-bit client depreciation so yeah if you're running 32-bit windows os which 99.9% .9 of you are not um you'll have to update your windows to 64-bit to actually play league so yeah there you go 99.9% .9 of players so yeah, it's it's basically just modernizing League it, to not be kind of held back by having to also develop for 32-bit Windows, which is obviously so less powerful and everything than 64-bit. So there's that. Showcase Milestone. Oh, that's nice. So yeah, the Milestone things that just take up everything, you can just auto-click it, I guess. Bugs, obviously, and then the upcoming skins. Well, there we go. So yeah, mostly a patch about pro play, not too much about solo queue. I'd love to hear your opinion on should should more of these patches be more solo queue. But obviously, you know, most of the time it is quite solo queue orientated. It's because MSI is happening in the next few months. They are very much honing in on pro play specifically. But let me know what you think. What should the future of League Balance should be? But anyway, that's going to be it. If you guys did enjoy, do throw a like on it, throw a comment, throw a subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Call down the reckoning to bring back hope and peace. Restore our glory to live forever. Bring down the dark regime.